Hello friends, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Alyssa and I'm an American living in Rome, Italy. This is the first video in a new series where I interview other expats about their experiences and life living abroad. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing my friend, Shay Jordan. She is an American living in Bologna, Italy. So get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee, and let's get into the interview. Can you share a little bit about who you are, your expat journey, what inspired you to move abroad, and how long you've been living here? So my name is Shay. I've been living in Bologna, Italy for almost two years now. And my interest in living in Italy started first when I studied abroad in Rome, back when I was in college. And I always kind of felt a connection to Italy because my mom's side of the family does have Italian heritage. And we visited Italy when I was younger, and I loved it. Even just things like ancient Greek and Roman mythology was really interesting to me. I studied Latin in high school because it was the closest option, the closest option to Italian because it wasn't an option for us in school. So I think my interest really started during that study abroad trip. But unfortunately, I didn't learn Italian when I was there. And I really wanted to learn Italian. And when I wanted to come back, I wanted to be able to speak the language to like really embrace living here and feeling like a part of the culture. So I started studying Italian on my own during COVID and the pandemic, which was basically the perfect time because what else were you doing except yeah. staying inside? So since I was working from home, I had time to just like work, but also study on my own. And I had this goal of coming back to Italy, but during that time I had no idea when things would start to get better. So it was a little scary because I knew I had this goal to come move to Italy, but I had no idea when that would actually happen. And I kind of saw my dream getting further and further away, which made me sad because it's like something I wanted to happen right away. And I think also part of me was a little scared, obviously. It's like a dream is really cool and exciting, but when it becomes reality, it's like, oh, there's all these other things that are scary and made me nervous about actually making that jump. But finally, once things kind of started to clear up and I had like a more clear timeline, I ended up deciding to come study Italian in Bologna. I had no idea that I would be here for as long as I have been. That's basically what inspired me was learning the language and then just like going from there to see if I could really live here. But here I am. <laughs> so how did you acclimate to a new culture and what strategies did you find most effective in bridging the cultural differences? I mean, a lot of it was trial and error and like having to learn the rules of like a new society by making mistakes simple things just like not ordering cappuccinos after a certain hour or the way people dress you pick up on these things very quickly because just like observing the people around you i'm a yeah, very like observant, very aware of yeah, how you stand out <laughs> i'm a very observant person so i'm kind of like making mental notes when i'm out and about also though since i had spent time in italy before like i knew some of these things going into it mm -hmm. like Italians don't wear athleisure like we do running errands. I mean, when I was in LA and I would wear just like sweatshirt and leggings to go to Target or run errands, for us, it's totally fine. I've literally gone to Target in my PJs yeah. and here that would be like absolutely not. But I think also I tried to make Italian friends, which I know we'll talk about like making friends later, but because that way I could learn from them cultural things as well. Even just like the culture around food and meals and it was weird how st like stores and restaurants will close at the certain time in the afternoon. So if you're really hungry and you didn't eat lunch before like 2 p.m. Because yeah. there's so many places that close. So learning that is really just trial and error. You're like, I'm going to go to this store because I need to pick up whatever. And then there's a sign that's like, we'll be back after 4 or 5 p.m. or something. So it's like... For me, trial and error, because there's no way to possibly know every single detail until you're actually here. So I guess this question applies to your very first time in Italy, like when you were studying abroad, because you learn the most then. Mm -hmm. But were there any cultural aspects that really surprised you? And how did you navigate those differences? There's so many different categories, like food, the clothing and like the way people dress store like grocery stores and other stores that are just so much smaller and don't have as many options as like our big stores in the U.S. When I was surrounded by a bunch of other Americans on my program it's hard because we have like a very American mindset so when things weren't exactly the same that we had 
it's like hard because I guess maybe you're not expecting that. It's a different experience now that I'm here by myself. But when you're surrounded by a bunch of other Americans that have like different expectations and stuff, it's like, I don't know, you get kind of trapped in that mindset because you're all one group and you're like, why aren't things like this or like that or whatever? It's harder to assimilate. Yeah. And I think also uh, the people, like the people in the U.S. are very friendly and chatty. When you go to order a coffee here, it's just you say your coffee order and they bring you the coffee. Whereas, you know, if you go to Starbucks, you go anywhere in the U.S. and, hey, how's your day? You know, they're asking about you and I'm just like, what like now when i go back to the u.s it's weird to be chatting with people all the time but people are so much chattier and you realize here it's very much just like you order done you Get out of the way yeah it's very even just like people on the street you're not as like chatty with or the smiling thing like i always people always say like oh we know how to tell who the americans are because they like smile at you on the street and it's so true because sometimes people here they seem like so mean I feel like I've stopped making eye contact with people. I mean, I didn't really do that a lot to begin with because, like, people scare me. But people just, like, don't. And people don't, like, make eye contact over what they do. They're just, like, they seem mad. Maybe yeah. they're not. It's but not they're like just a friendly look. Yeah. And I think maybe it's different because, like, when I was in Rome the first time, I could only speak English. So I didn't even have the opportunity to try to speak Italian. But I guess maybe I thought some Italians were more, like, closed off. And maybe it's also because we traveled in groups of like Americans that they were like, mm, we don't want to get involved. But I think that's also kind of like why I wanted to have my own experience in Italy coming back another time. Because I did feel like I was in such a bubble when I was in Rome the first time. Like I didn't have a real Italian experience. I think I was still like young and scared of being in a totally different culture that I almost like protected myself from really experiencing what it was like in Italy because it felt safer to be with like my other American friends and we spoke English and I didn't have to worry about like doing all this stuff on my own because we could all just get through stuff together and like not break out of our bubble mm -hmm. you know so on my channel I really like to talk about the reality of life abroad I like to point out the difficult parts the, the parts that nobody talks about nobody warns you about so I have a couple of those questions for you what are some of the most unexpected challenges you faced when you, not the time studying abroad, like when you moved back on your own, mm -hmm. and uh, what did you do about them? <laughs> I got a lot of challenges because it's like, when you decide to move here to actually live here, you have to go through all the hard parts of getting an apartment setting up bills setting up internet things that you wouldn't think would be that difficult but everything in italy is a lot more difficult than you would expect even though i speak the language now there's still always feels like certain obstacles that are specific towards me as a foreigner because maybe my language when talking about internet or technical things that i don't have the vocabulary for makes it harder but also things like people will kind of treat you differently if you are a foreigner trying to find an apartment as a, as a foreigner is very difficult because you have to reach out to these agencies or private owners and a lot of times they just like will not respond to you or do not want to rent to a foreigner because maybe they think you know they won't actually be here for a long time or they just have certain ideas about foreigners like that alone is very hard I had an American friend who was also looking for an apartment. And when she had her Italian friend call to make appointments, like he got so many more responses. So it was very obvious that like that is exactly what was happening. That like people would just, the second you say you're like American or something, yeah. there is that like prejudice against you in those areas. Also things like not having an Italian bank account has actually been an issue for me with getting internet, which is something I never would have thought of. It's just internet, but it's another obstacle. And just like the feeling of being a foreigner especially when you don't you can't really like pass for italian it's just something that makes it hard to like really assimilate into the culture and feeling italian mm -hmm. but i think the more i become comfortable in bologna i do feel really happy that i live in bologna because i do feel somewhat of a community like i do feel good and safe and happy here because it is a smaller city it's not like rome or even just more of the touristy cities where I think I'd always feel like a tourist. Do you have any specific moments that like perfectly encapsulates 
the reality of being an expat here, like both, like either a good or a bad example of a moment where you just really felt like, yeah, I'm not from here. <laughs> That's a good question. And I'm trying to think of an example. I do have a moment. So I went to uh, Trento up in the north last year, actually. There wasn't a lot of English or like American speakers there, but it's fine because I spoke Italian. And I went to this castle and there's a tour up in like the top of this tower because there's these really pretty um, like frescoes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do that because it was also just like a cheap add on. I was like, that sounds cool. And they did. They had an audio guide. And I went to the t uh, up to the tower like when it was the time for the tour and they were passing out like the audio guides and stuff. And I can't remember if like someone had talked to me in English or there was some way where someone knew that I was American. Maybe it was because the person at the counter gave me the pamphlet that was like in English, like the informational thing, because there's this group of people and it's quiet. And the guy shouts to his like coworker, like, we need an English, like we need an English audio thing because they had them like um, programmed or whatever. And they were like, English over here. And like, screaming just for, just for me because everyone and everyone was staring at me and I was like because I mean maybe the audio guide I probably could have gotten by in Italian but you know everyone's like oh Italiano Italiano he's like walking around oh, you know Italiano Italiano and then he like I guess I needed a special one for English because he like shouts to his, and it was a quiet room and there was like 25 other people I was like oh <laughs> so there are moments like that where it's like I don't think that person is like trying to offend me but for me it is hard if I didn't, if I was in another country that I didn't speak the language, fine, yeah, English over here. But like in that moment where I'm already trying to kind of like blend in, it was just so awkward. I was like, no, not English over here. <laughs> language learning, your whole channel is about language learning. There's lots of resources that you've put a lot of time and effort into on your channel already, but can you briefly share a little bit about your experience with learning Italian and uh, what are some of your favorite go-to methods for for learning well my whole channel is about language learning so if anybody needs resources linked below yeah <laughs> it's really hard because it was the first time i've self-studied the language i feel like a lot of us have had experiences learning a language in school which is also i think i used those kind of methods to try and learn italian like using a bunch of textbooks because that's how i was taught how you should learn a language but a lot of us learn Spanish or French or something in high school and then realize we actually didn't even acquire that much of that language just because the methods aren't the greatest. So I had to kind of learn how to learn a language and that was again just like trial and error. But I think the most important thing for me was finding ways to learn that are actually enjoyable and fun. So if you like watching TV series, there are so many platforms now you can find series and movies in different languages or you love reading books. It doesn't even have to be fiction. If you like reading things about psychology or self-help or development stuff, you can also try that in another language. Also, it's important not to start with really difficult things, like start as if you're a child, because that's when we acquire languages. So reading children's stories, short stories. I watched Peppa Pig in Italian. Like, you don't have to feel embarrassed about doing like the children's level stuff when you're first starting. And really just finding what works for you, because even though I give advice on my channel, things that work for me might not work for someone else. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily like doing flashcards all the time, but maybe someone else likes that routine and having all their flashcards, they like that organization. So I always give tips and like things you can try, but it's there's no one way to learn a language. And so I think it's important to find what works for you and find ways to immerse yourself through reading watching TV, series, podcasts, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. and then just like go from there because you find something that's sustainable that you can keep doing and not lose motivation. As we dive into these insightful expat conversations, I want to hear from you. Share your own experiences, questions, or thoughts in the comments below. Have you faced similar challenges or exciting moments while living abroad? Let's build a supportive community where we can learn from each other. Your stories matter, so don't hesitate to join the conversation. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Now let's connect and make this place a space for sharing our global adventures. I'll see you in the comments. Can you think of a moment where you had something 
humorous, like embarrassing happen because of something you said wrong? Um, yeah, in class. <laughs> so it's fine because it was like, at least it was in the classroom environment. But there's a lot of false friends in Italian. In Italian class, we were talking about um, foods in our different countries. And I was trying to explain how American foods have a lot of preservatives. If people know Italian, they know where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, um, negli Stati Uniti abbiamo molto cibo con i preservativi, which does not mean preservatives. I don't know if I should say it. Like, yeah. I just, okay, I was like, I don't know if this video, but yeah, so it means condoms. So I basically said, in America, in America, we have a lot of food with condoms. And my teacher laughed because she knew, like, this. She said, don't worry, it happens a lot. But it was so awkward when everyone else in the class was laughing. But that's like also how you learn. I knew to never say that again. But it also scares me because I'm like, what other words do I think like I could just make? take from English and make Italian that aren't, you know, thank God it was in a classroom environment because I would be really terrified if like I was talking to some Italian. Mm -hmm. I definitely have also said the, we say I'm excited, but if you translate it directly into Italian, it means like excited, nice. excited in that kind of way. <laughs> And so you can't, I, a lot of times you have to understand the different connotations. I think I have literally said that to, I was messaging with like a pen pal kind of person when I was learning Italian back in LA. So I was just using like apps to talk with native speakers. And it was with a guy my age. I told him I was excited because I was learning Italian. And he, and he was like, why like you didn't understand i was like oh and then later on i learned that like mm, that i don't mean it like that like i'm i'm happy <laughs> i'm happy to be learning italian something that i find particularly difficult is making friends in a new city mm -hmm. so as an adult making friends in a new country can be particularly challenging um how did you go about building your social circle and do you have any tips for other people mm -hmm. So I made a lot of friends at school. So that's like an easy one. If you're coming for a specific program, you can obviously meet people through school. But the problem is a lot of them don't stay as long as you, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I actually utilized social media, which has been really great. But I also am lucky because I already had like a social media presence. So I had some people reaching out to me that were already in Bologna who were students. And then I just remember I actually posted a TikTok video saying like, I live in Bologna now. And I love to practice Italian. And I got way more messages from people than I expected. But it's really nice because some of them I met up with. And now, like, they're still my friends, my Italian friends who I get to practice Italian with. And most of them, yeah, now that I think about it, they're all students at the university. So we're all around the same age. Now, the reason I chose Bologna was just because there was such a big student population. So I knew that would be a way to make friends as well. Yeah, so just thinking about the place you're going and how you could make friends there is important too. Mm -hmm. Like what kind of age group is there and what are you looking for, like that kind of thing. Have you had any unique experiences or challenges, issues as a solo female traveler or do you encounter any challenges being a female abroad? Yeah, I mean, sometimes just this feeling safe or not feeling safe in certain places. Unfortunately, there are some cities that I probably wouldn't go to as a solo female just because I wouldn't feel safe. I always try to be like really aware and smart, but obviously there's some things that you can't um, like predict or expect or prepare for. I think especially in Italy too, there's still some like old ways of thinking like maybe because I don't have a guy with me, like people may think of me differently. I mean, it definitely happens where people, men come up to me and try to talk to me or ask me to like go out with them or get a drink with them or something. I would be afraid of like being followed because I especially don't want to be followed back to my hotel. And there were definitely a lot of times where I did solo travel where I just decided like, unfortunately, I can't be out at night because I tried like the first night and maybe I felt uncomfortable and it's unfortunate but I'm like I have to my safety is more valuable than like being out at night which I'm not really out at night it's just more of like 
when I was in Sicily, for example, I was walking around Catania at night and it was so pretty with the lights and like seeing all the monuments. I love seeing cities at night because it's very, it's like a different experience. Like even when I'm in Rome, I love it at night because all the lights turn on and it just feels different. But it was frustrating because in Sicily, I was walking around and having such a nice time. And then all of a sudden on my way home, I had like three separate men try to talk to me and it just like ruins my mood like I immediately I'm like well I do want to go home now because now I'm frustrated and annoyed and I feel scared because I always feel like I have to look around like just in case so okay for the people who have never been to Bologna or even heard of Bologna what is what's some of the best parts about the city uh the food (laughs) and the food is like number one I love that there's a lot of young people and it feels like a very lively city even though it is actually very small it's you can walk like across the center relatively quickly uh there's always something happening like always different events and you never feel bored and i do like that it's small because it feels less chaotic than like some of the bigger cities it doesn't seem as touristy is there like a hidden gem that you know about or i i mean Hidden, I feel like okay. One thing I I'll say is that a lot of people don't go up to the church, the San Luca, because you have to walk up the porticos, which actually is like the longest line of continuous porticos in the world. I think it might be like a UNESCO like site or something. And I think a lot of people are scared. They're like, oh, it's gonna be so intense. It's really not that intense, but it is so beautiful, especially if you do it in like the spring or not when it's super hot. Um, in the spring you can see all the beautiful hills, and it's just like a very nice experience you have really nice views the porticos are beautiful and the church at the top is really beautiful i think a lot of people forget about it because it's not in the center Mm -hmm. so i think if you do go to bologna don't skip that part like it really i I swear it is a really nice part a lot of people never do it when i first got here it was like i think five or six months until i actually did it for the first time and i was like oh this really is nice. <laughs> what do you miss the most from your home country or state? And how do you cope with homesickness? I miss a lot of things. I do miss driving. I miss being able to get in my car and just like run errands and go to the stores that I love to just meander around. Mm-hmm. I don't, here I don't go to stores just, just like to for like, fun. yeah, just like wander around and see what they have because they don't have target or tj Maxx, like fun stores where you can just look at things that obviously you don't need but it's just fun to like look because here the stores aren't big enough to just have an enjoyable peaceful experience it's like get out of my way like i need to get to the milk you know like, <laughs> it's not <laughs> i mean we just have a different culture i guess of like i mean we do buy a lot of things we don't need but it can be fun to like you have your drink or- top three favorite stores in america to like do that at i mean target of course it's like the first one i can think about i don't know how to categorize all those ones that are like home goods marshall's Roth. they're like the same it's our tj bag yeah target TJ. and it's a supermarket oh i mean trader joe's trader joe's <laughs> no. i was like are supermarkets in this like I in mean, this lineup like, <laughs> fun to like look at the products and like just take yeah. your time and you don't know rush they have things that are always changing yeah. like we in the u.s love seasons mm-hmm. and like the idea around the seasons mm-hmm. and i just love like themed stuff we're yeah. very into like themed especially when it's fall and like there's all those pumpkins and pumpkin spice. everything <laughs> edible pumpkin yeah i am such a pumpkin spice person yeah and i love and i try to like i actually brought back a little thing of pumpkin spice you too. because I that way you can have a pumpkin yeah i have one too in that cabinet right there <laughs> Because I love that stuff. And that's kind of things that I'm not going to give up. Because at the end of the day, I am still American. And I love this stuff. And I'm not just going to happy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Same with like decorating for Christmas. Yeah. I do that. I would love to get actually more stuff here. Me too. (laughs) Because I do love that stuff. Are there specific traditions or cultural aspects that you make an effort to maintain while living abroad? You have a boyfriend now who's Italian, so maybe your Christmas traditions are going to be a little bit different. Like maybe he celebrates on the 24th where you celebrate on the 25th or like Christmas presents under the tree, things like that. Like I don't know if his family does the same stuff your family did. So are 
Are there any things that you've talked about you want to do this year or anything like that? I am kind of curious to see what it will be like. I feel like Christmas, based on what I've heard, is very centered around like the food, like the meals that they have. Whereas for me and my family, we do have like a Christmas day dinner, but it always varies. We don't have like the same types of foods. And at home, I also have the tradition of like Christmas Eve, we reflect on like the year and we have junk food. I don't know how that tradition started in my family, but we have <laughs> junk food, like stuff that we would normally never eat like throughout the year, but we get like mozzarella sticks, pigs in a blanket, like all the frozen foods that you just like heat up in the oven and maybe we'll open like one gift and I like that but I am curious to see how it will work because I feel like even getting older my parents still would be like oh it's the magic of Christmas like my mom would still sometimes write like this one's from Santa and I'm like yeah. mm, we know it's not right. and my mom was still stuff stocking yeah yeah like, me too yeah which like stockings I don't think is a thing I don't think so because yeah we would still like hang up our stocking are you going to try to do any of your traditions here this year or not really? I didn't, I didn't think about that, but now like, maybe I should. I don't know. Okay, so how often do you get a chance to visit America? And like, did you have reverse culture shock or what were some of your experiences when you go back? So I've visited the U.S. twice now, and I definitely felt reverse culture shock. As I mentioned earlier with just like the people who were nice and friendly and wanted to chat with you more when you like order a coffee or do simple things. Mm -hmm. Also walking into a grocery store this last time because I did go around Thanksgiving so we went to do like the Thanksgiving grocery haul. I forgot like how big the stores are, how many options you have. Each aisle has like so many different options for everything. My mom would be like okay, can you go, because we'd split up and like do the list, you know, like each one would get different things. And she'd be like, can you go get this, this and that? And she would have all her stuff and she'd come find me. She'd be like, you're still looking for the first thing. I'm like, yeah, there's so many options here. Like I almost, I like less options. Probably what I like Trader Joe's too, but how big the stores are, the people are so chatty and like so friendly. Also, even just the thing with like, speaking of options, different types of milks in your coffee different types of like you can customize things at a restaurant basically you can ask for dishes to be like changed or take this out take that whatever in Italy it's like no you we have this dish like it doesn't change so little things like that are just like something I totally forget about when I'm here is tipping oh yeah yeah that too it's so I forgot how intense it was there because you like order a coffee and they show you that screen and they're like how much you want to tip yeah, yeah like, like zero <laughs> yeah no I do that too yeah. I went to do um a takeout order and I went in to pick it up and then the woman like handed me the receipt and there was the tip line and I was looking at her I was like yeah, they just stand there like yeah. looking at you <laughs> and then so I didn't do anything because I'm like it's a take I just said hey pick up for you know whatever right. and then I grabbed it was it. like service yeah and I got in the car with my mom I was like mom I totally forgot am I supposed to tip on like takeout order let me go tip just you don't tip ever and in, in the U.S. you tip for well they want you to like tip for everything or there's the yeah. pressure to tip for everything and I'm like That's I don't think it's necessary topic, <laughs> yeah yeah I agree have you discovered any aspects of Bologna or Italy that you've really come to love and appreciate deeply? Yeah, I think this is just an Italian thing of I spend a lot more time with friends because the even just like the idea of aperitivo and like getting a drink and just chatting, I feel like I spend a lot more time talking with people and just enjoying like the company of other people. When I hang out with my boyfriend's friends and we're in a group, you don't have to do anything super special. I feel like when you're organizing things with friends in the U.S., it's like, well, what are we going to do? Right. But here in Italy, it's like you just meet up with your friends for aperitivo and you kind of see where the night takes you or you just go for a passeggiata in the center. Mm -hmm. And that's like... It's like more about the relationship yeah. than the activity. It's about like the time, the quality time and stuff. And it's not always like... Well, we always have to do something or have some plan of like occupying ourselves and I find that really valuable. If you could go back and give yourself advice before moving abroad what would it be? I would say have like a really good connection to like why I'm doing this because there are times where I've like wanted to give up or felt like 
is this something I really want to do? I feel like if you don't have that, it's going to be really hard to keep going through the really hard times. Like moving to Italy, there's a lot of people online who say they moved to Italy, but like they don't have a visa. They're just like here on a 90 day vacation. Yeah. Um, Because I think you're implying yeah. that's like the hard process that you have to keep doing. Yeah. It's like the bureau- bureaucracy side of things that mm. a lot of people don't even know that you have to go through when yeah. you say you moved. Yeah, new country. Exactly. But even just like finding apartments, all that. Because I think one thing I thought is that eventually the hard part would end. Like that's what I thought is once I get through the getting a permit, being able to legally live here, the rest will be easy. I remember reading blogs about people who've moved and whatever and they're complaining. And I was like, well, that won't happen to me. Like they obviously just have a bad attitude about it or whatever. Like I was very much like, it can't be that bad, you know? And then I got here and I was like, I get it like I understand because it doesn't end and that's the part where it's like if you don't have a strong reason or motivation to be here that you're like I enjoy it so much that the good kind of outweighs the bad it's gonna be really hard for you like it's not for the week you know what I mean I don't want to scare anybody but I also came into it with the intention of well it can't be that bad eventually the hard part will be over but after two years I'm still even now in the process of like difficult parts if anything more difficult like it becomes you just have the reality of like actually what it's like to live here so i think in addition to knowing your why if you even remotely think you'd want to be there for a longer amount of time longer than maybe you want to study for a few months go for the year like it will be easier for you if you do want to renew i originally went just for six months and i wish i could have told myself no, just go for the year because deep down I knew I wanted to stay longer. I get a year-long visa because when you, if you want to renew and stay longer, you have to renew your permesso and it's easier if you already have a year. Because otherwise you have six months, it feels like every month you're trying to, to like do bureaucracy stuff. Any final words of wisdom for those considering or currently navigating the expat life? I would say not to compare yourself to other people's journeys if your journey is like oh I actually do need to go back to the U.S. some more spend more time in the U.S. or whatever your home country is and you see other people are like I haven't been back to my home country in years you know everyone has a different journey and if you need to make yours what works best for you that's fine don't feel pressured to live a certain way or you have to tell everyone back home you're living the Dolce Vita if it's not true Mm -hmm. and you don't also have to try to live that way just because that's what we think in America that Italy is it's just like being in a villa in Tuscany and drinking wine and having the best time ever I have had those moments where you're like this is a dream and you will have those ups and downs but it's not going to be like that every single day and if it isn't don't worry that like oh my god like I've done something wrong or I shouldn't have done this it's life You know, it's not just like living in Italy, you get to escape whatever you're trying to escape where you came from previously. There's going to be ups and downs no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. For me, Italy is like, like I said before, the good outweighs the bad. So it gets me through those tough times. And I do have beautiful moments and travels in Italy, but it's not that every day. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for this chat. (laughs) I have linked all the places you can find Shay down below, so be sure to follow along on her adventures there and learn from her language learning resources. 